Welcome to another edition of Thoughts in the Word. I want to thank you for sharing your time with me, and I hope that this brief video uh, can be in some way a blessing to your life. Before we get into our thoughts for this evening, let me give you an invitation to come worship with us here at the Salem Creek Church of Christ. Our address is 2525 Salem Creek Drive here in Murfreesboro. We're just off of uh, Salem Pike, uh, very close to Cason Lane. You'll be welcome to come worship with us every time you have the opportunity. We meet Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock for our morning worship. We follow that in, at 1015 with uh, Sunday school. We come back on Sunday nights at 530 for an hour of worship every Sunday evening. And we also meet on Wednesday nights at 645 for uh, 45 minutes of Bible study. You would be welcome to join us here on any of those occasions. Well, open your Bible with me this evening to the 18th chapter of the book of Joshua. I want to read verse 7 from this chapter. And here the Bible says that um, the Levites have no portion among you because the priesthood of the Lord is their inheritance. Now that verse goes on uh, to talk about some other things not connected to the Levites, but I want to talk about them for just a few moments and uh, what is stated there in Joshua chapter 18 and verse 7. In 1916, my paternal grandparents took their family and moved from Alabama to Oklahoma. Uh, they farmed the land there for a couple of decades, including uh, the Dust Bowl years of the 1930s, and it was at that point that uh, things became very difficult for them. The latter part of the 1930s, they moved back to, uh, uh, to Alabama. Uh, during the entire length of their lives, so far as I know, they never owned any land. They never owned any house. They always rented uh, land that they farmed. They lived their entire lives in rented houses, so far as I know. I always thought that was kind of a sad thing, that they spent their lives living in somebody else's house, uh, they spent their time as farmers farming somebody else's land, but certainly they were not alone in that situation. Now, in the book of Joshua, uh, the Israelites, the sons of Israel as they're called, have conquered and settled the promised land. That book tells how each of the 12 tribes received their own inheritance. Each family within each tribe was given uh, land. It was theirs. It was their property, their land. Actually, in Old Testament theology, the land belonged to the Lord, and they were really just tenants on it. But God gave it to them, and that land was to stay inside the family. It was to be that family's possession perpetually. He didn't really want them selling the land or getting rid of it uh, in any way. But there was one exception to that. All of the tribes were given land except one, and that was the tribe of Levi, the descendants of Levi, one of the sons of Jacob. That is stated more than once in the book of Joshua. In that verse we just read, Joshua chapter 18, verse 7, the Bible says, The sons of Levi have no portion among you, because the priesthood of the Lord is their inheritance. Notice that again, the Levites have no portion among you. They don't have any inheritance among you. Earlier in chapter 13 and verse 33, the Lord had said, but to the tribe of Levi, Moses did not give an inheritance. The Lord, the God of Israel, is their portion. Notice there, uh, Joshua chapter 13 and verse 33, Everybody else is getting land except the tribe of Levi, the descendants of Levi. And it's very specifically stated there that to the tribe of Levi, Moses did not give an inheritance. As we look at that from our 21st century perspective, perhaps that seems to be a little bit unfair. We might want to ask, why didn't they get any land? Well, we have to bear in mind that the descendants of Levi, now remember Jacob had 12 sons, one of them was Levi. Um, they were not counted in the census that was taken of people who were able to go out to war, and you read about that in the opening uh, verses of the book of Numbers. Uh, Joseph, there was no tribe of Joseph. Uh, his two sons replaced him as well as the descendants of Levi, and so you had the tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh. 
But what about the Levites? They had, they had a very special relationship to God. The Bible tells us that they were set apart for the service of God. Their consecration to that task is described in the 13th chapter, rather the 8th chapter of the book of Numbers, uh, verses 8 through about uh, verse 18, verse 13 through 18, I should say. And in that text, the Lord said to Moses, Thus you shall separate the Levites from among the sons of Israel, and the Levites shall be mine, for they are wholly given to me from among the sons of Israel. I have taken them for myself, instead of every first issue of the womb, the firstborn of all the sons of Israel. For every firstborn among the sons of Israel is mine, among the men, among the animals. On that day that I struck down the firstborn in the land of Egypt, I sanctified them for myself. But I have taken the Levites instead of every firstborn among the sons of Israel. That goes all the way back to the 12th chapter of the book of Exodus, where God sent that tenth plague on the land of Egypt, the death of the firstborn. When he did that, he consecrated every firstborn among the sons of Israel to himself. Now, here in Numbers chapter 8, uh, verse 13 through 18, he says that instead of taking every one of your firstborn sons, I have substituted the tribe of Levi in their place. So he took them to himself, and it stated in that passage that the Levites shall be mine. They are wholly given to me. Although all the sons of Israel really belong to the Lord, in a special sense, the Levites occupied that relation, they, that relationship. They belong to the Lord. That's a very prominent role, by the way. Uh, in the Old Testament, again from the book of Numbers in the 8th chapter, they were to perform the service of the sons of Israel at the tent of meeting to make atonement on behalf of the sons of Israel so that there will be no plague among the sons of Israel uh, by their coming near the sanctuary. They performed a very special role in that position that they occupied. That was to perform the service of the sons of Israel at the tent of meeting. That's the, sac uh, the, the sanctuary, uh, what we very often call the tabernacle. What was done at the tabernacle was simple. That's where sacrifice was offered to God, sacrifice that made atonement for sin. And God said to the entire nation, that's the role that I've given to the Levites. They stand in that relationship to me. I've taken them for that purpose, to perform the work of the sanctuary, which was so vital. And so when you look at this business of God not giving them any land and saying something else was their portion, understand that their portion was much larger than the land that was received by the rest of the nation. In fact, it was so much greater that you really can't compare the two. Now, here's where the problem comes in for us. We human beings have just a big tendency to focus on material things. Uh, we keep an eye on our investments. We, we watch the stock market. We balance our checkbooks. We're prone to complain about the price of gasoline and groceries, and you know that I'm right about that. Well, perhaps some of us might even reach the point that we feel like we're financially secure enough to retire. That's just the way we are. We focus on the material things, or we focus on our health. We focus on the time that we have on earth. God told the Levites, your focus is to be on something else. Go back to the verse we read in the beginning this evening, verse 7 of Joshua chapter 18. The priesthood of the Lord is their inheritance. Think again about what he said in Joshua 13 and verse 33. The Lord, the God of Israel, is their inheritance as he has promised to them. How many of us are so focused on the material things or the length of our lives on earth that we forget that there is something much larger. I wonder how many of us are focused on the Lord. Are we God-focused or are we materialism-focused, <laughs> focused on the material things of life? What if God said to us, 
you don't get any land, you don't get any portion there. I am to be your portion. When Jeremiah wrote the book of Lamentations, his beloved Jerusalem lay in ruins. That was a cause of great distress for him. He's very often referred to as the weeping prophet. In Lamentation chapter 2 and verse 8, he reflected on that when he said, A wall of the daughter of Zion, let your tears run down like a river day and night. Give yourself no relief. Let your eyes have no rest. Lamentation 2 and verse 18. The weeping prophet then reflected on his own state of affairs. And he wrote some amazing words of faith. And I want you to listen to them. Remember my affliction and my wanderings, the wormwood and the bitterness. Surely my soul remembers and is bowed down within me. This I recall in my mind. Therefore, I have hope. The Lord's loving kindnesses indeed never cease, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I have hope in him. And that comes from Lamentation 3, uh, verse 19 through 23. Think about it, friends. The Lord is your portion. That's what he says to all of us. Jeremiah viewed Jerusalem in ruins. That caused him to weep. He shed tears. But he was able to say in faith, The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I have hope in him. Think about all that he says about God. The Lord's loving kindnesses never cease. His compassions never fail. They're new every morning. And his faithfulness knows no limit. Are we content to say, The Lord is my portion, are we so caught up in the, the pursuit of material things? Are we so concerned about current conditions around us that we lose our focus on God? No matter what happens to us in this life, no matter what happens around us, we all need to have an ability to say by faith, the Lord is my portion. God said to the descendants of Levi a long time ago, you don't get any land. The priesthood is your portion. You don't get an inheritance in the land. The Lord is your portion. God says to us today, I will be your portion. Is that enough for us? I pray that it is. Bow with me and we'll go to God in prayer. Father, we give you thanks for today for every blessing that you give to us. And you've blessed us so richly, Father. We are so rich, even the very poorest of us. And if we have you as our God and we're walking in fellowship with you, Father, we have something that cannot be measured. In spite of what is going on around us and all the turmoil that exists in this world, help us to say by faith, the Lord is my portion, therefore I have hope in him. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, thank you for joining us. Come back next week. Until then, may God richly bless you all.